we have digital artist Ted Minecraftzinski with the first in a seven part series. Boop. First of all, thank you for supporting the arts. I get the feeling that many of you are suffering. We are struggling in ways that are difficult to understand and it makes it difficult to get help. I will suggest to you this evening, though you may already know it, that the character of human experience has shifted so drastically in recent decades that some tools our ancestors evolved with to navigate that experience no longer function and we are stranded as a result. Simply, choices we have made and that have been made for us are having strong negative consequences and we might consider a different strategy. This is the world commodities map. It represents the most important activity of each country as it relates to the global economy. The global economy is the organizing principle of the human world. Neighborhoods, cities, schools, governments, companies. Unless you're hunting, scavenging, or farming for yourself, it's all about money. It is now unthinkable that any person's life is not arranged on the basis of income. This is our relationship to wider society. Ultimately though, our most valuable resource is actually human attention. It is dynamic, powerful, and scarce. There's no conceivable way that we could ever gain more attention per person than we have always had. It is required for anything to be meaningful. It is an irreducible element of our conscious experience, a beginning and an end. The biggest investment of our collective attention is the mass production, manufacture, distribution, and programming of computers. We are investing a lot into technology. It's making things easier. It's making us more productive. It's connecting us. It's entertaining us. But is it worth it? American terrorist and philosopher Ted Kaczynski believes that technological development all the way back to the Industrial Revolution has been a disaster, and that we should return to a pre-technological society, and that the only way to accomplish this is revolution. But I'm Ted Minecraft Zinsky, and neither I nor the producers of this lecture series endorse terrorism or violence. There are two fundamental categories of questions that we are faced with. What is there? And how can we deal with it? We might refer to a few questions of fact, but today we are exploring over here. Our answers to any of these types of questions in the field of biology is called behavior. Behavior is how an organism interacts with its environment and should be studied at the individual level and at the group level for the full picture. Organisms seek to ensure the flourishing of their unique genetic lineage. Behavior emerges as the complex outcome of the meeting between genetic you and your environment. You are not genetically identical to your parents, but pretty much you are actually. This is a history of human civilization, about 6,000 years in total. Each line consists of about 40 generations. This is a visualization of a much bigger history. It can be a little mind altering, but you have to sit with it for a bit. Some people find it easier to read left to right, but we're going to start on the right side. The orange civilized life pillar is just another version of the last slide. The dark orange at the top is the last 200 years or so. The entire pillar is 240 generations and it fits into the next pillar, human life, as just a little orange sliver at the top. The whole human life pillar is 12,000 generations or about 300,000 years, and all of it fits into the humanoid life pillar of pre-human evolution that lasts 6 million years, and then we do it again with the mammal evolution, about
about 250 million years, and finally the life on Earth pillar. That is the entire timeline of 4 plus billion years of biological life. Like I said, you have to look at this for a while, at least I do, but it can give you a perspective of the vastness of evolutionary time. The conception of history that I walk around with is basically just like the civilized life pillar on the right, but the reality is much more immense. The important thing here is that we did not appear on Earth 6,000 years ago at the beginning of civilization. This is all our history too. Everything we have is just a newer version of what the organisms that came before had. In every step of the way, these organisms were evolving in a reciprocal relationship with the environment. Whatever you think about the oddities of the universe that are single-celled organisms, we are made out of them. The ground is our ancestors in a weird, true, distant way. But history is big, and the space between genetic you and your genetic parents is essentially nothing. If we think about the amount of environmental change per generation as a variable, it would represent how much adaptation an organism must do in order to obtain an equal fit to his or her environment relative to the previous generation. You inherit your parents' genetic structure and an environment that is somewhat different. This diagram represents magical curses proportionate to the magnitude of environmental change from one generation to the next. The first one is like an average amount over our evolutionary history. It's like a low-grade freeze ray. Second one is much more serious. It's a fireball or an asteroid. And it's going to take some work to recover from. Then this one is an interdimensional cluster bomb of confusion and despair. And this is what we're getting now. And this is what we've been getting for a few generations in a row. The world is a completely, unfathomably different place from one generation to the next, so if you feel like you don't fit in, or you don't know what to do, or that something is majorly wrong, or like you aren't good enough, that's probably a pretty normal effect of this, and you shouldn't feel bad about it. It is bad, though. For us. This is the devil, with a Hitler mustache, in case you're not religious. But there is another organism, another facet of the human species that is not genetic culture. Ouchie did not say this. Someone's been tampering with my files. Culture is an orienting force for people. It tells you a lot of things to do and not do. It can be anything, kind of. So my abstract definition for now is culture is patterns of social interactions. And the culture that a species adheres to spreads and continues dependent on the success of the species itself. So if the tribe or whatever does well, their culture does well. Cultural norms that are adaptive are non-genetic, non-environmental influences on behavior. So culture is wrestling with the ought questions, or the how can we deal with it questions. And culture includes the linguistic tradition. And the linguistic tradition sort of gives us a more concentrated form of control over our culture and behavior. So if we're living the same lifestyle for a thousand years, and some observant individual notices a looming threat that could doom us, he or she can wave and shout and articulate his or her specific anticipation of future events or prophecy, and then everyone can listen and decide how to act. And sometimes it works just like that. Not usually, though. The way it usually works is that meaningful states of mind are encoded in language, and a kind of evolution happens, an evolution of ideas and states of mind and adaptive ones survive and reproduce. Popular collections of these objects can be art or education, and law even prohibits or encourages behavior by force. These patterns rattle around in our heads, sometimes helping us and sometimes just distracting us. Remember, all of this is brand new in terms of the evolutionary timeline. Religio is essentially an aspect of culture, but it's unique to humans because it emerges from the development of the linguistic tradition, which is unique to us. So you could think of religion as the center of culture, because language is so central to our experience. But culture could and has existed without religio. Religions systematically expose people to certain states of mind, much of it encoded in language, but not all of it. And you could think of that as brainwashing or mind conditioning. But if the participants' lives are more meaningful and equally or more adapted to their environment, then maybe it's good to get the old brainwashed every so often. 
but I'm definitely not going to suggest you just do what you're told. So hang on. You can think of both culture and technology as evolving alongside us. Technology might just be a part of culture, I'm not really sure what the best way is to think of that. But they are not a part of our gene structure or our bodies that we know of, but they can evolve from one generation to the next. So, technology in the last ten generations, since the Industrial Revolution, has made the world, and thus the human experience, unrecognizable ten times over. The main thing that technology is doing here is increasing the rate of data transmission. Prior to written language, information is transmitted at the speed of the organism that carries it. By documenting, sharing, and editing each other's ideas, all kinds of possibilities have opened up. Information that is adaptively useful is passed on. It has ought meaning to us. Otherwise, information is distraction. It consumes your attention. We were using a social structure, religio, to condition information with meaning. Now we are getting much more information than is useful, and our religio structures are unable to help us. As our technological capacities multiply, possibilities of human behavior multiply. Perhaps culture, including religion, evolved precisely as a means of tackling the ought questions posed by the potential that technologies created. Animals don't choose what to do. Their instincts and some conditioning are sufficient to determine behavior. And we might be the same way. And we might not. Technology has broken the cultural dam that protects us against the infinity of existence. And so our ought questions are being answered by whatever we can find. But we don't go to church. We browse, we watch, we create content, we ingest, we binge. Technology dazzles us by what it does to is questions. But when it comes to ought questions, technology is like a Pokemon. The only response it knows is its own name. Technology. 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 Technology has caused this by making things much easier for us and by making a credible case that the world was not made in seven days and rainbows were not invented by a really old guy. Technology. But they are not the same word. Religion was not a tradition of facticity. It was a tradition of wisdom. Technology is having this effect on us because we are confusing facticity with truth. Technology.